mulch, a layer of material applied as a protective barrier to the top of bare soil. Commercial applications are often a sheet of plastic or geofabric. But us backyard growers almost always go natural, using an organic aggregate like this straw. Mulch comes in many forms. In fact, there's almost as many mulches out there as there are benefits to using it. Almost. I'm 1000% convinced that a garden can only perform at its peak potential when its bare soil is mulched. So today, we'll talk about why you need to mulch your garden, how and how much to mulch, and we'll look at all the various products that you can use to protect your garden's most important resource. No question today's episode is a biggie, but that's only because it's so vital to what we're trying to accomplish in our backyard gardens. So, pull up a chair, grab a beverage, and let's talk some mulching. Like we mentioned, mulch is any material that we put on top of bare soil to protect it. It can be plastic, fabric, straw, wood chips, grass clippings. All of these things are a mulch. The material that you pick for a mulch is going to depend wholly on what you're trying to accomplish. As veggie growers, we all have pretty ubiquitous goals of more and better harvests while preserving our soils for future crops. As such, organic aggregates are the top choice of mulch, of which we have quite a few to choose from. But before we get into the various and specific materials available to us, let's first look at the benefits of mulching. Why is it so important for us to cover our soils, both bare and in and around our plants? Whenever you wonder whether or not a practice is gonna be beneficial for your garden, Stop for a moment and observe what nature does. More often than not, nature has designed a system of perfection that, when copied, can produce amazing results. Mulching is no different. Out of all the benefits, and there are many, I've keyed out six ones that directly affect us veggie growers. First up, mulching greatly helps to eliminate topsoil erosion. Now, that's very important for a crop like garlic here, that's planted right before the harshest month of the year. In fact, this is huge for all plants, as the majority of our crops are watered from overhead. So, coupled with incessant precipitation at certain times of the year, bare soil is easily washed away, exposing delicate plant roots and possibly unearthing younger specimens completely. A thick layer of mulch really helps to disperse the falling water, and it prevents that precious topsoil from being blasted everywhere. Without that mulch, any falling water is just going to make a mess of your garden. When you slow the action down, you can see that the water hits the millions of little pieces of mulch, each one breaking up the collection of water droplets into harmless, life-giving moisture. It's quite amazing how even just one inch of mulch is able to do this and affords so much protection. In addition to protecting your soil and your plants from the brutality of that falling water, mulch is also going to help your soil grab onto that moisture, hold onto it, and not let go so easily. Bare soil evaporates and loses water in its top layers at an astonishing rate. Wind and the beating down sun will take water from a soil almost as fast as you can put it back in. A nice thick layer of organic mulch will not only retain moisture itself, but it'll also directly protect the immediate top layer of soil from drying out. And with a greater amount of moisture retention comes significantly less need to water. And when we water less, we keep our soil significantly more fertile. You see, every time we water, especially our containers, we literally wash the soil of nutrients and organic matter. 
There's no getting around it. Our plants need moisture. We have to water them, obviously. But if we can minimize those waterings through mulching, our soil is going to stay fertile for much longer. And that's going to require less fertilizing and less supplementation on our part. On top of that, organic green mulches such as grass clippings and spent foliage come with their own nutrients to add. A little bonus that they shed back into the soil for your crops to use. Another key benefit of mulching is temperature control. Lying perpendicular to the noonday sun, even in my temperate climate, topsoils can reach temperatures of 100 degrees or more, effectively killing any beneficial microbiology in that first inch or so. And this is in addition to drying out and desiccating our shallow rooted crops. Not good. Mulching solves this by keeping the soil below it significantly cooler. This allows the roots to flourish and the plants to focus on growth rather than survival. Not only that, the cooler temperatures means less water loss overall, both from transpiration from the plants and from direct evaporation from the soil. On the flip side, mulch also keeps your overwintering crops snug and protected from the extreme cold, as well as frost heaving. This is important for crops such as strawberries and of course garlic. Mitigating extreme temperatures in either direction is a mulch's specialty, so employ it both in the summer and in your winter garden. Moving along, we have soil health. Now, this is kind of a broad benefit that mulching has on soil as a whole. So for the purpose of today's video, I'm gonna narrow it down to just the protection of the microorganisms in the top layer. You see, the top few inches of a healthy soil profile contain the highest concentrations of not only organic matter, but also microorganisms. This is where nearly all of the biology and bioactivity of a soil takes place. If that layer becomes frozen, cooked, or dried out, it ceases to function as it should, leaving you with an exponentially inferior soil than it should be. Mulching really protects that top layer, and it preserves the living processes that make good soil good. This benefit cannot be overstated, and it becomes much more tangible after successive crops, after successive seasons. Lastly, and this is an immediate benefit, mulch is going to suppress weeds. Weeds normally distribute their seeds by air, landing on bare soil, and establishing new colonies all over your garden. A nice thick layer of mulch not only takes away the airborne seeds landing pad, it also chokes out and suppresses weeds that are already in your soil. It's not 100% effective all the time, but as a preventative measure, the results can be amazing. Mulching will quite likely save you hours and hours of future weeding, and this is on top of all the other benefits. And when you start stacking all those pros, all those advantages up, you can see why gardeners are so adamant about mulching their crops. Okay, by now, we're all on board with mulching. We want to water less, conserve nutrients, protect our plants and soils, and have healthier gardens. But what do we use? What makes a good mulch? The options are many, so let's go through a few of the common ones that you're going to be choosing from. First up is a mulch that a lot of people use, but I actually don't recommend it. That's right, compost. Now, don't get me wrong, compost is awesome. I use it everywhere I possibly can, just not as a mulch. By adding compost to your garden as just a blanket, now it's the layer that's exposed. It's the layer that dries out, and it's the layer that loses all its microbial activity. And you know what? Now we just negated all those wonderful benefits that compost gives us. For sure, use compost whenever possible. Work it into your potting soils. Top dress fresh beds with it. 
Just make sure it's not your top layer and it itself gets covered with a mulch. Okay, so compost is a no-go. What can we use? Well, fortunately, that list is pretty long. And the first one on it is grass clippings. Actually, as long as it's applied loosely and the source is free of chemicals or pesticides, green grass clippings is not just a good mulch. It's a great one. Now, you don't get that aesthetic wow factor like you do with other mulches, as the green on green tends to blend in. But grass clippings more than make up for that with other benefits. Namely nutrients and organic matter. Fresh cut green grass sheds readily usable nitrogen back into your soil. And it does this relatively quickly, so your crops can start using it right away. Not only that, as it begins to break down, which it does relatively quickly over the course of a season, it'll add valuable organic matter to that top layer of soil. It provides great coverage and it's very easy to apply, as long as you don't let it clump. Not to mention, it's free and it's readily available. You see, grass is often growing at the same time as our crops, so there's always more supply. And finally, level up your grass clippings by mixing it with twigs and leaves for an even fluffier, heterogeneous mixture. And on the other end of the spectrum of mulches, we have things like bark and wood chips. Aesthetically, I love these mulches, and they work great around shrubs, fruit trees, and woody perennials. However, they're just not my favorite for veggies. Wooden bark is just too heavy and coarse for the lush stems of most of my food crops. Not only that, wood that's not broken down does have a tendency to extract and bind up nitrogen for quite some time. So, great around our shrubs and fruit trees, like this young fig here, not so great in our veggie gardens. One of my all-time favorite go-to mulches, though, is straw. Now, when I say straw, I don't mean hay and straw mixed. It has to be clean, fine straw. You see, most hay is going to contain seeds, and that's going to sprout up, and you're going to find that very annoying. Straw is my go-to mulch for most of my crops. It's very light, and it does all the things that a mulch is supposed to do. It's very similar to those grass clippings. And while it does break down and become a great source of organic matter for your soil, it doesn't contain any nutrients. And that's why sometimes I'll actually mix it with green grass clippings for the best of both worlds. Straw is great for your summer plantings. It keeps the soil cool and it locks in that valuable moisture. But it's also one of the best mulches for winter protection for those dormant plants like strawberries and garlic. Straw is a great mulch, easily in the top three. But going a step further, we have living mulches. These are basically secondary crops that are planted right on the surface of the soil that grow and spread and thrive under the canopy of the main crop. So not only do these living mulches protect the soil in the same way a traditional mulch does, they also give you another crop. Herbs such as basil and cilantro make great living mulches. Seed them heavy and harvest the leaves here and there to keep the soil coverage high. Another type of a living mulch that we often use are cover crops, like this guy right here, fall rye. Cover crops usually take the form of aggressive grasses, cereal grains, or other really fast growing crops. They completely cover the soil and totally choke out all weeds. Rarely though are these guys used as a mulch in conjunction with another crop. But for dormant beds or soil remediation, they cannot be beat. For a complete tutorial on all things cover crops, check out the link in the top right corner. And finally, the last mulch on our list comes from the crops themselves. Now, you don't really see this one until the end of the plant's life, but spent crops can be cut down and redistributed to the soil right in the same spot they were growing. It's a method known as chop and drop. It's very effective and efficient at maintaining soil nutrition as it returns precisely the exact nutrients and elements that the plants took up in the first place. 
At the end of the season, use the chop and drop method on your more robust crops. Things like corn, tomatoes, peppers, even squash. They act as great protection and soil cover, and they'll return those valuable nutrients right before the coming winter. Good for your soil. As you can see, lots of different mulches to choose from, each with their own sets of strengths and advantages. Whatever mulch you choose, the application is quite easy. I simply pile it around my plants immediately after planting, around two inches thick. Don't wait to apply your mulch. In fact, do it before the first watering. It'll lock in and settle right after you water and you'll start seeing the benefits right away. For direct seeded crops like beets and carrots, go with a much lighter application, no more than an inch deep or so. Any thicker and the seeds might actually have a tough time sprouting up. While mulch isn't part of your soil profile right away, shallow seeds are not designed to sprout up from a great depth and they don't know the difference. So apply your mulches accordingly. Not only do I leave my mulch on all year, in fact, I never remove it. Like we said, these aggregate mulches eventually break down, becoming the organic matter for the next top layer of soil. Unless you applied it on super thick for winter protection, just leave your mulches in place. It doesn't get any easier than that. All right, as you can see, the world of mulching is deep and extensive. We covered a lot today, no doubt, so let's recap those main points to solidify what we learned. A mulch is anything that we use to cover bare soil. And while the industry uses man-made plastics and fabrics, us home growers rely on loose, organic materials. And there's many of those materials available for us. Get creative and don't hesitate to mix and match for even better results. When we mulch, we're essentially just copying what nature does so effectively. Bare soil is prone to erosion, extreme temperature swings, moisture loss, and weed colonization. And you know what? Mulch solves all of those things. And mulches go even a step further than just that suit of armor. They can also return nutrients and valuable organic matter back into your soil profile as they break down. The best gardeners employ a mulching system to keep their soils healthy and their plants producing beyond what they even thought possible. Mulching is an essential part of soil health and thus an essential part of our gardens. It's no surprise, nature mulches continuously and bare soil is virtually non-existent. There's a reason for this. Hopefully today, looking at all those various mulches and how to apply them has inspired you to cover up that bare soil. It really is key. Mulching is essential to a healthy garden. So best of luck this year, guys, and I'll see you soon. Hey, thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.